What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. I am Pitching Ninja, and I'm here with a very musical, Will Leahy. What's happening, Will? Sing That's me right. something, Will. <laughs> and I'm gonna keep... <laughs> That's what I was thinking earlier. Let's, I'd like to strike that from the record. A little Sunday Night Baseball yesterday. We had the Battle of the Filthy Luises, and uh, it didn't disappoint. Luis Severino and Luis Castillo uh, were really throwing a bunch of junk out there, Ninja. And uh, although the Mets ultimately got boat race 12-1, to 1, the score was not indicative of the filth, Ninja. What were these two guys throwing? I thought it was an outstanding pitching outing. I mean, I wasn't blown away by the pitching yesterday in general in most of the games. And then my closing ceremonies was this baseball game. Sunday night baseball really brought it. Luis Castillo went six innings with nine Ks. Nice. Giving up only one run. He had these sliders, but the story of the game for him were these ungodly sinkers. Holy crap. He had sinkers with up to 21 inches of run. Look at the movement on these things. Absolutely disgusting. These were so filthy that my man Luis Castillo Killed a man. That's right. OMG. Jose Iglesias <laughs> going down to the dirt on this one, taking a dirt nap. There's his soul escaping from his body as the Mariners pounded the Mets 12 to 1, and the Mets' souls escaped from their bodies too, just because they saw this pitch. But it wasn't just this pitch, honestly. Castillo was just flat out disgusting yesterday. The camera angle has something to do with it, but this is the Mariners' traditional camera angle. And look at the movement of these things, dude. This is crazy. He faced Luis Severino, who had some sick stuff himself. He had eight Ks in five innings, giving up four runs. He had this sinker with 16 inches of sharp break. These fastballs and changeups, but the sweeper was the story of the game for him because his sweepers and sliders had crazy movement. Here's an evil one that got a sword. He had an Expelliarmus slider. And this sweeper had 21 inches of break. I know it's a ball, but that's 21 inches of break on a sweeper. Here's a sweeper with 19 inches of break from a home plate view. And you can see why you would give up on this pitch. This is disgusting stuff. Thank you from Pitching Ninja to both Luises for putting on a show last night. Now the rest of my whip around the league, Jack Kohanowitz. I just love that name. He had two Ks in seven and two-thirds innings, giving up two runs as the Angels rose above the Nats, six to four. He had this 97-mile-an-hour sinker and this curveball. Not a lot of Ks, but I'm seeing some good stuff out of the kid. He faced Mackenzie Gore, who had two Ks in four innings, giving up five runs, but none of them were earned. So this is a virtual shutout for Mackenzie Gore. He had this slider and curveball off the plate that was somehow called a strike. Stefanik goes to the umpire. Must have whispered, like, you suck, because this pitch wasn't close. Hunter Brown had nine Ks in five and a third innings, giving up two runs. He had these upper 90s fastballs, these 95-mile-an-hour cutters, and picked up a sword on his cutter, as well as his knuckle curve. He faced James Paxson, who went two-thirds of an inning, giving up two hits and no runs. Why did Paxson leave the game, Will? Because he got brutally injured, didn't you? He did. Sad. Did the Red Sox win this game, Will? No, Ninja. It just was not the series we needed against the Astros, I'll tell you that much. They kicked some Astros, if you know what I mean. They got their Astros kicked, Ninja. They did. (laughs) Marcus Stroman had 1K in five innings, giving up one run, had this painted cutter as the Yankees beat the Rangers 8-7. to He faced Andrew Heaney, who had 4Ks in four and two-thirds innings, giving up three earned runs and had these change-ups. J.P. Sears had 4Ks in seven innings, giving up three runs. He had this elevated fastball for a sword. As the A's shot down the Blue Jays, 8-4. to four. He faced Chris Bassett, who had 5Ks in four innings, but gave up seven runs. He did have a nasty two-seamer here and a curveball, but not the best outing from Chris Bassett. Jeffrey Springs had 8Ks in five innings, giving up one run. His change-ups were so good this game that he got discombobulated and changed up the dugout he was going to, mistakenly walking to the wrong dugout. His crossfire mechanics are what makes him so filthy. He doesn't have, like, overpowering stuff, but look at his mechanics. He kind of steps across himself and throws across his body, making it tough to hit. As the Rays glided past the Orioles, 2-1. to one. He faced Albert Suarez, who had 5Ks and 6 and 2 thirds scoreless innings, thanks to his mid-90s heaters and this cutter. Max Meyer had 4Ks and 6 and a third innings, giving up four runs. As the Marlins swam past the Padres, 7-6. to six. He had these sliders and painted with his slider. 
He faced Dylan Cease, who had five Ks in five innings, giving up two earned runs, had these sliders and painted with his slider as well as this knuckle curve. Not Cease's best outing, but still decent. Ninja, this game was marred in controversy as Hassan Kim hits this epic game-tying home run in the ninth with two outs, only for it to be called back as a ground rule double because it actually bounced hit the top of the wall and then hits Towers' glove as he alley-oops it over the fence. Since it hit the wall and then hit him, it was back in play. It's a ground rule double. If he just can sake it off his skull and went out, it'd be a, a jack. If it was off the top of the wall and went out, it'd be a jack, obviously. Ninja, I hate this rule. What do you what do you think about this? This is a stupid rule. If the ball doesn't hit the ground and goes over the fence, it's a home run. F*** it. We're changing the rule right here on the Pitching Ninja Show. The Reds topped the Brewers 4-3. to three. Nick Lodolo had four Ks in five and a third innings, giving up three runs on three hits. He had these wicked curveballs, and this one that induced a weird kind of soft contact. He faced D.L. Hall, who was really good yesterday with nine strikeouts and four and two-thirds innings, giving up three runs. He had these sliders, change-ups, and curveballs. The Australian beach babe, Tenor Bybee, had five Ks in five and two-thirds innings, giving up one run. He had these change-ups and sliders and got absolutely fired up as the Guardians beat the Twins five to three. He faced David Festa, who had three Ks in three and a third innings, giving up one run and had these change-ups. The Rockies beat the Braves yesterday, 9-8, thanks to an avalanche of runs in the eighth inning. Spencer Schwellenbach. Let's go to, to Schwellenbach, Texas. Sales we Raylo Freed and the boys. Had seven Ks and six innings, giving up two runs. He had these sliders over and over again. And he faced Kyle Freeland, who only had one K in three and two-thirds innings, giving up three runs and had this fastball. Mr. Tambourine Man, Hayden Birdsong, had five Ks in four and a third innings, giving up five runs. He had these fastballs and curveballs. And he faced Kadir Montero, who had two Ks in five innings, giving up four runs. Some pretty boring fastballs as the Tigers slipped past the Giants five to four. The D-backs stung the Phillies yesterday, 12 to five. Merrill Kelly was back. He had two Ks in five innings, giving up two runs. Had these fastballs and change up. And he faced Christopher Sanchez, who had four Ks in four and two-thirds innings, giving up seven runs and had these change-ups. The Dodgers topped the Pirates yesterday. Tyler Glass now is pitching against his old team, had four Ks in seven innings, giving up two runs. He had these fastballs and this hammer curveball. He faced Bailey Falter, who had two Ks in four innings, giving up three earned runs, and had this elevated slider. Now onto my filthiest relievers. Jason Adam had this change-up for a sword. Hugh the saxophone. Alexis Diaz had this fastball and slider. Araldus Chapman had this 104 mile an hour fastball. It's a ball, but it's still 104 miles an hour, as well as this wicked splitter. Emmanuel Classe had this 102 mile an hour cutter. Hunter Gaddis had this slider. Clay Holmes had these wicked sweepers. And Joe Kelly had these heaters at 98 and 99 miles an hour. My top five filthiest pitches of the day yesterday at number five, Pete Fairbanks and his wicked change-ups. These things are filthy. At number four, Tyler Glass now and his hammer curveball. At number three, check out this sweeper by Danny Young. This sweeper had over two feet of break. Yep, 25 inches of break. Disgusting. At number two, Luis Severino and his filthy sweepers. And at number one, Luis Castillo and his Bohemian Rhapsody two-seamer. Mama, you just killed a man. And now, my pitching ninja moment of zen. Since the Olympics are over, I decided to match up Jose Iglesias with the Aussie breaker. And look, Jose Iglesias might have won a gold medal with this effort. A mix of the day today are a four-leg same-game parlay plus. I'm going to start with the same-game parlay of Clayton Kershaw for 5Ks or more and Freddie Peralta for 6Ks or more, and then take Luis Heal for 7Ks or more and top it off with Chris Sale for 8Ks or more. What would your mix of the day be? 